afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the set of the Tanya Joy Show. We are so happy to see you here today. I hope you are having a great week and that you had a great weekend. I've got a question. Have you ever thought about what the phrase really resting on the Sabbath means? Like when the word talks about the importance of keeping the Sabbath day holy and having it be a true day of rest. What do you think that actually means? And as a follow-up, do you even know what the true Sabbath day is? Because there's, you know, some changes that we've experienced here uh, since we've kind of adopted more of this Greek mindset, particularly here in our Western culture. So we're going to talk about that today. We, you know, we are at such a fast pace. Our world is moving my goodness, especially the last four years, faster than I think it's ever moved. And there is an importance to figuring out how we find rest. We understand truly what the Sabbath day actually is. And we kind of quit living in this drive-through mentality and mindset. Well, we've got Mark Matheny back. He was on a show with us about a week ago. Um, You probably remember he goes really deep. He is a researcher. He's a veteran. He's a Messianic Jew, and he understands so much and has so much wisdom. So we've got him back today to dive into all of this. We're even going to show some clips of his movie that he has made. He's just fascinating and has just so much wisdom. So we are very excited to welcome him back to the show. Today is Monday, February 19th. Please remember to go hit the like, follow, subscribe button, and please share while we're getting ready to start this show. Go and share it to five of your friends. Welcome to the show. I'm Tanya Joy, and this is The Tanya Joy Show. We'll be right back. Okay, well, we weren't shocked. Now, welcome back to the show. You as well. I'm so excited to have you both on the show. And I know we had such good uh, feedback and reception. General Flynn, what an jo- honor. Joshua, Joshua tracked me down in a big tent of about 4,000 people. How are you? I am doing so great. Hello, everybody. Thank God, I am wonderfully great. Hello. Thank you very much. Because what is prayer i just do it you know what i mean and it, i'm thrilled to be here with the two of you <laughs> me too it's like and that's who these crazies these evil ones it is you said it right good job Perfect. all right the gibson sisters we are so excited to have them on with us on resistance chicks today good morning good morning good morning it's time to run these people that get higher up how sometimes i've thought well, these are glory days and not gloomy days like i love that <laughs> You know, and it, it kind of works. It's awesome works. about the tour is people like you. Good. I love the applause. That's cool. There we go. Thank Hi, you. Joy. Everybody, welcome. We are so excited. Are you ready to get the show on the road? Let's go. Hey, friends. You already know the answer to this, but we'll ask you anyway. If you stay away from your favorite junk food for a month and then go back to supersizing it, will your health improve? Well, that's the thing about change. To change, we have to be as consistent as possible. And when we go back to an old habit, it's not the end of the world. We just get back at the new habit. Before you know it, real transformation is evident to you and others. That's why we offer a bunch of helpful bonuses when you subscribe to Kingdom Fuel. Kingdom Fuel is our complete nutritional meal shake. It's the simple start to a transformed life, and we'll auto-ship every month so you don't run out. You'll receive two free shaker cups, free access to our video courses, and a monthly call with us filled with practical inspiration. Just see the link below or on your screen and subscribe today. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. As I mentioned in the intro, we've got Mark Matheny back. He's a veteran, a researcher, a Messianic Jewish believer. He breaks down current events as they are leading and bringing in and understanding world government. He's a regular on the Awake Nation, and we're excited because he's becoming a regular on the Tanya Joy Show. And um, I just love all the wisdom that he has and uh, his breadth of knowledge. So we're going to bring him on in. Hello. How are you today, sir? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us again. You've seriously got so much. It's fascinating to me because I've just started to 
study and really understand over the last couple of years, the importance of really understanding the Jewish roots, right? Like as a Christian, we're kind of lost if we don't understand that, which is half of the, the Christian church right now. So it's always fascinating to me to talk to someone who really understands all of that. So thank you for joining me again. So glad to have you. Oh, well, I appreciate you uh, bringing me back to the show. Um, the first show was great. And, um, you know, I look forward to hopefully being on on a regular basis. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you have to remember, even in the time of the apostles, um, you know, there were many warnings about falling away from the faith and yeah. and deception coming in and and, um, you know, so that's you should and, be surprised and, right <laughs> yeah and over that time a lot of it has come in and uh, yeah. but a lot of people nowadays don't realize that it has and uh you know so the first thing i want to say is everyone out there who uh has faith in the almighty you know that's a great thing um so this is not meant to cast aspersion on people or to downtrodden them it is should hopefully raise you up and lift you up to a point. But we also have to remember, like Paul said, if a man thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing as he ought to know. Uh, if any man will be wise, let him become a fool that he may become wise. So, so a lot of times we have these preconceived notions and we so it our pride kind of creeps in and mm -hmm. and we don't want to admit maybe we were wrong about something. But it's OK to be wrong because. At the point you find out that you're wrong, then you become right and you totally. are set on a new path. So for every ending, there's a new beginning. And so, you know, with that, you got to be humble. And so that's what I try to do is, uh, you know, be humble. But at the same time, uh, we have to be firm in the faith. We have to be strong in it. And and the Bible says to expose the wickedness, um, you know, and to rebuke the unrighteousness. And so that's what I try to do. Uh, but be clever as a serpent, gentle as a dove as well. Right. So you were talking about the Sabbath, you know, the word Shabbat in Hebrew uh, means a rest. And, um, you know, the Messiah he talked about the Sabbath a lot and did things on the Sabbath. Um, the apostles uh, and later in, I think it's in the book of Hebrews, a, a profound verse that says, I can't remember exactly the verse right off my head, but it says, therefore there remains a rest to the people of the Holy one. Yep. In Hebrew, it, it says there remains a Shabbat or, and even in the Greek text, I think it's, it's a Shabbaton um, is the Greek, but so it says, therefore there remains a Sabbath to the people of the Holy one. And I think it was, a, it, it, he was saying in a spiritual sense that, you know, the coming rest will be the thousand year reign of Messiah will be in a sense that Sabbath, six days, 6,000 years. And, and then the yeah, seven wow. thousandth year, some, some theologians would look at as that Sabbath rest when Satan will be cast into the abyss and there will be no deception for that thousand years, you know, so that truly will be a rest from uh, temptation and things of that nature. But also I believe what he was showing was that there's, therefore there remains a Sabbath to the, to the people of the almighty. And so we know that on, uh, if you go into the book of like Genesis, um, you know, it talks about the creation week and, uh, the seventh day, uh, the almighty rested from the works that he, he did and created. And it says, therefore he declared that day as a Sabbath holy. So a lot of people would look and what I tell people is it's not a Jewish day because the Sabbath was created before Jews. Yeah. It was created with the Adam that. and Eve. They weren't Jews. You know, the Jew comes from the word Judah, which was one tribe out of 12 right. in Israel. And so it's not a Jewish holiday or a Jewish day of rest. It was uh, the Messiah said something profound. He said the Sabbath was made for man. And not man for the Sabbath. He didn't say the Jew. The yeah, Sabbath's made for the Jew. <laughs> he didn't say that. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I, I want to, I want to, I don't want to lose your train of thought. No, but you're fine. What you're saying, I think, is so valid. And you said it when you first started, and now you're really reiterating that that this whole point of, you know, what you're talking about, what you've studied, what you've written about, your your movies, all these things. It's not to um, 
point a finger. It's not to like, it's, it's to teach. It's right. literally because we are, we have lived in a culture here, especially in the Western church where um, these things haven't either. I don't know if they've just not been understood. You know, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. They're just not understood by a lot of the, the pastors, the seminaries are not teaching this to uh, the new people. And so it ends up where we're in a culture where the Christians don't know this. They really don't. So it's an opportunity to teach, like just what you're saying. The Sabbath was long before the Jew. It was very much at the very beginning of creation. So right. if we believe in God, why are we not living in the manner in which he actually established all things? Yeah. So, you know, he gave the Sabbath because also, if you look at it in, in the ancient times, many times, what is... One is one of the commandments of the Sabbath that says that you should cause your manservant, your maidservant, even the animals to rest. And so in them times, a lot of times in slavery and in servitude, indentured servitude and so on, people worked seven days a week and yeah. people did not get a chance to rest. Um, so this is, you know, on the Shabbat, everyone was to rest, even the animals in the field. You weren't to plow the fields. You weren't to do buying and selling things of this nature it was really meant as a day to refresh yourself just as the almighty did it says he he, he rested and he was refreshed i i don't believe that the holy one was tired but you know but it, it's yes. a, it's in a sense a lesson for us to rejuvenate um and uh but you know there's another scripture that i want to read real quick it's in isaiah um chapter 56 real quick um, it, th I'm reading this one from the World English Bible. And the World English Bible, the reason I'm reading it from it is because it, it restores the sacred name of God. So when you read in the King James when it says the Lord says this or the Lord says mm -hmm. that, in the Hebrew text, the four letters of the sacred name, yod vav Yahweh, is yeah. there. Uh, that's why you say hallelujah, praise be to Yah is, is the poetic yeah. form of God. So this is, what's it called? The World English? The World English Bible. It's oh, a, it's a good translation, awesome. um, okay. but it uh, it just restores the name of the Almighty in that text. And it, so now this is for, what I like about this verse is this is universal in a sense. This pertains to all mankind and listen to what he says. And this is the old, you know, what people would perceive as the Old Testament um, in uh, in one of the prophets, Nevi'im, it says, Yahweh says, maintain justice and do what is right for my salvation is near my Yeshua and my righteousness is soon to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds fast to it, who keeps the Sabbath without profaning it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. But he goes on to say, let no foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh speak saying Yahweh will surely separate me from his people and do not let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree for Yahweh says to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, plural Sabbaths and choose those things that please me and hold fast to my covenant. I will give them in my house and within my walls, a memorial and a name better than that of sons of daughters. I will give to them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And he says also to the foreigners who join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love Yahweh's name, to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath from profaning it and holds fast to my covenant, I will bring these to my holy mountain and I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. But then he goes on to say that he's not only gathering the outcast of Israel, he says, but I will gather others to him in addition to his own who are gathered. So what I like about I that, that. I love that version of that, ver of that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of really broken awesome. a little more simply, but it doesn't, you know, take anything from the text. Um, and so, but right there, he's saying not only, uh, you know, is the, is the Israelite, blessed for keeping the Sabbath, but even a foreigner who joins themselves yeah. to them to love the name of the almighty, to keep his covenant, even they will be accepted in his house for my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. He says, so, you know, again, that's showing that the Sabbath was not made for yeah. the only the Israelite it's made for man as the Messiah said. 
and not man for the Sabbath. We are also not to be um, in, in Orthodox Judaism and so on. I, I don't ever want to cast an aspersion because I believe that Orthodox Jews, uh, there's, there's prophecy in the future that the Almighty is going to show that they shall look upon him whom they pierced and yep. they shall mourn for him. So it says that uh, the eyes of the of the Israel nation will be opened at some point, and they will Amen. they will recognize the Messiah. But here's the here's the thing: uh, we have to understand that the blindness has come about on a massive scale. So yeah. here he talks about keeping the Sabbath. Then, if you go into Isaiah chapter uh, fifty eight. I believe it is. There's a there's a scripture that says that we shall be called restorers of the breach and repairers of the paths to dwell in. Um, everyone who keeps their foot from breaking the Sabbath. So that Sabbath is tied into repairers of the breach and restorers of the paths to dwell in as well. Wow. Um, and then Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16, I believe it is, where he says, the Almighty is telling the children of Israel, seek ye the old paths and find out where the good way there, uh, there is, uh, find out where in the good way is and walk their end in. And he says, and you shall find rest for your soul, a Shabbat. Mm -hmm. and it, it, but the people said, we will not walk therein. And yeah. so again, the Holy One is saying, look for the old paths, find out where the good way is and walk therein. You think about a river. I always tell people, if you have a river source, a spring, if you go right to the source of the spring and you get the water, it's fresh, it's clear, it's clean. Best. But as it runs down river and goes through all the mud and the trash and the things, then it becomes contaminated. And mm -hmm. for so lack of better analogy, that's what modern churchianity, I'll say, and we'll call Christianity, I call it churchianity, where it's become polluted. And you're still getting some of that spring water, but it's been contaminated with a lot of other garbage and mud and trash and whatever else. So what we have to do is seek ye the old paths and find out where the good way in is and then walk therein and we shall find a Sabbath for our soul. Um, so the Sabbath day is a mark. And I want to show you, actually, I've got booted up my movie. It's a portion of the movie. It's only Perfect. a few minutes long. But this covers the Sabbath. And so if you could play, uh, yep. well, if I could play that, uh, if someone could play that. And let me know if the sound plays. Okay. Yep. Got it. So with that, what I look at is this. One, if you go back and you read the scripture, the Almighty says, surely you shall keep my Sabbaths. For it is a sign between me and my people that they shall know that I am Yahweh. Um, the Almighty says that the Sabbath is a mark. If you look it up in Hebrew, it's the word ot. It means an evidence or a stamp or a sign, a, a signature in a sense. Um, so one, the Almighty said his Sabbath, his Shabbat, is a sign between him and his people that they should know that he is the almighty. And so the seventh day Sabbath, which starts at Ben Ha'arabim between the evenings on Friday evening, as the sun sets, that begins the Shabbat on Friday evening to Saturday evening. And a lot of people misunderstand that because if you go back in the book of Genesis, however, it says And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. In the evening, and then the morning were the first day. You know, what it is, is the Almighty created on this, you know, that he created Shabbat to give us rest and refreshment. You know, just like he said, he, he, uh, he rested from all the works that he created and made on this Shabbat. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that. If you go to the book of Genesis, it says the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. Uh, the Almighty's day doesn't start at midnight like the Roman calendar does. 
uh, the the Almighty's day starts at the evening, at the setting of the sun. You have 12 hours of darkness and then 12 hours of light. The Almighty's day starts in darkness, but it ends in light, you know, and that's uh, that's a, a, a nice thing that we can look at. But the Sabbath is one thing that the Almighty says is a sign. But in that scripture, too, it says, surely my Sabbaths, plural, you shall keep, for it is a sign. A lot of people don't understand that the Moadim, it's called the Moadim, the holy days of the Almighty, uh, in the book of uh, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, you know, Numbers. When, you, when you're when you reading the holy days, like uh, Pesach, which is Passover, and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, and uh, the Feast of Trumpets and Tabernacles, the last great day, and so on, the seven holy days, they are um, – they are set for us to observe, and they are also a sign or a mark or an evidence that the Almighty has given us. And also, if you look at the New Testament, I think it's what Paul, he says, uh, the holy days are a shadow of things to come for the body of believers. So what the holy days do is they they kind of show a plan of redemption. And... Um, but a lot of people are not aware of that because they don't study the holy days and they don't observe the holy days. And so they have been replaced when uh, the Roman Catholic or the Roman Empire rose and Christianity started to spread uh, throughout that empire. And Constantine and them saw that they had to solidify the empire, but they had all these Christians. Uh, he then claimed to have seen the, you know, the uh, the sky open up and he saw the the cross and he said in this sign conquer and so on and um that's exactly what occurred if you want to talk about the mark of the beast you can't just talk about the microchips and you can't just talk about the the 5g and stuff people those things are all going to be tools but really a lot of the mark of the beast has been implemented already and 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 people don't they don't realize this you got to remember that it says in the last days people are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons having their minds seared as with a hot iron they're going to run after teachers having itching ears because they they want to hear something new every minute they don't want to hear what the uh maybe what they need to hear um that's one thing is the shabbat the sabbath day is not sunday constantine the great in this sign conquer he changed that day to the first day of the week the dia solus invictus the, the unconquerable sun because they worship the sun god on the first day of the week so they switched it and they also switched it to avoid uh, having anything to do with the most hostile rabble of the Jews. So the Sabbath and the holy days are one thing. Uh, if you look at all of the, the holidays like Christmas, Easter, you know, uh, these holidays, they are, they get, they come from ancient Greek, uh, Mithraism, um, and the, the Saturnalia and the Yule, those are all uh, pagan holidays coming from the Roman religions uh, through Mithraism, uh, primarily, and other mystery religions and so on. Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the ways of the heathen. And do not be dismayed by the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but cannot speak. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. You, you, you fasten it so that it doesn't topple and you you deck it with silver and gold Th this is the Christmas tree this is the modern Christmas tree but in ancient times the evergreen tree was a symbol of life and they would deck it and they would you know uh, dedicate it to their gods in ancient times Asherah 
delves from that too, which later became Eostra or Easter, the dawn goddess. And uh, sunrise worship comes from that because if you look in the book of Ezekiel, there's a point where the Almighty condemns the priest because they have their backs turned uh, from the temple uh, and they are facing the sun. And uh, modern churchianity uh, basically follows a lot of these pagan holidays that were instituted by the Roman Catholic Church. He brought me to the inner court of Yahweh's house, and I saw at the door of Yahweh's temple, between the porch and the altar, there were about 25 men with their backs toward Yahweh's temple and their faces toward the east. They were worshiping the sun toward the east. And uh, modern churchianity uh, basically follows a lot of these pagan holidays that were instituted by the Roman Catholic Church. But a lot of people do not want to hear that or they just they know it, but they don't want to follow that. So um, this is the permeation of paganism into into the apostasy of uh, the body of believers. Yeah, so uh, that that's just a portion wow. of the show. It's about two hours long. That's amazing. And that's a hard one. The Christmas tree, that's, a, that's such a hard yeah. one. I mean, I, right. I know it is. That's a that's hard for me. I love Christmas trees. And, and I get it. You know, that's wow. the thing. Um, remember, the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man, but the yeah. latter ways thereof lead unto death. Yeah. Um, there's wow. another scripture that says, and I can't remember where it's at. I think it's in Hosea. Or Amos might be an Amos, but it says that the the Gentiles shall come and say, "Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies." Yeah, and you know, and it's almost if that's like not being, if that's not what we are experiencing, and so many of us are saying now in these last few years, waking up and going, "We have we been lied to literally about everything," and we have literally everything. Let's do this. Let's take a. Do you have a thought on that, or do you want to no, hold it? Ahead. We'll do it right after the break. Yes. Okay. Hold your thought. Don't forget. Don't forget. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to take a quick break here and talk about some of our wonderful sponsors and the affiliates. They're really affiliates that I work with. And one that is new, and we don't have a commercial for them yet, but um, you're going to start to hear more about them. We've got another show we've done with Dr. Presser um, about getting your health back, literally getting all of your health back and, and restoring it and living, you know, healthy with energy and all these things. And, you know, we do a lot about health. So I want you to just do this. I want you to go check out. I want my health back.com forward slash Tanya joy. Just go over there and start perusing it and looking at some of the videos. There's something that I started taking called nanosoma and it's a spray. And I'm telling you, it's like I'm an energizer bunny now. It's kind of crazy. And I've had people say, we want some of that. They call it Tanya juice. Where do you get all your energy? I'm like, I don't know. And all of a sudden I realized that's the only thing I've been doing different. So we're going to talk more about it. I'm not going to give you a whole lot. Just go over to that website. I want my health forward slash Tanya joy and just peruse some of the videos and just kind of register so you can get some updates and information about it. You're not going to be inundated by anything, I promise. Um, but I want to share this with you because I'm seeing a huge impact on my energy levels. So hang tight. We're going to have a couple of our sponsors come up and then we will be right back. Government induced inflation, taxes, rising interest rates, political instability. All of these can have a crushing effect on our investments, often causing the stock market to go down. But they can also cause gold and silver to go up. Hi, this is Dr. Kirk Elliott. Buy gold, buy silver, buy now, but buyer beware. Precious metals companies are not created equal. As a PhD economist, I have been in the financial, economic, and precious metals business for three decades. The philosophy of my firm is people over profit. I encourage you to read my bio to learn more about me at kirkelliotphd.com. Now is the time to own physical metals in an IRA, 401k, and outside of a retirement plan. Don't let the government destroy your hard-earned assets any longer. 
call 720-605-3900 or visit KirkElliottPhD.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks for all right. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. We love Dr. Kirk Elliott. Uh, that's where your gold and silver, you know, that we got to be paying attention to our finances and what we're doing with our money right now. And he's the guy that I recommend and trust. All right. Also, please remember, you can check us out. We are in the midst of updating the website. So pretty soon, I'm going to be asking you to please come over to TanyaJoy.tv and subscribe. Um, I am still in the process of updating it. We just got the domain transferred over and it's going to be more robust. You're going to be able to see so much more about the show, background information about me, things that I'm doing, things that are coming up that are very exciting. You'll be able to connect with our, our affiliates and our partners and find resources and just a whole bunch of new things. Finally, we're so excited about that. So I will give you the green light on that, but you could definitely go check out tanyajoy.tv and see if you can subscribe. If there's not a subscribe button, then it's not fully done yet. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head. Wherever you're watching or listening, please give us a thumbs up, follow, like, and share. That is what really helps the show grow. And um, it really just mostly gets this message out to more people. And that's that's our main goal. We just want people to know the truth. All right, let's bring Mark back in. Yes. Welcome back. All right. So um, yeah, you know, I'm just thinking of some things um, where... Um, for example, when some will look at uh, some scripture in the New Testament, let's say. So I want to entertain some of these ideas Great. Um, where people would say, well, you know, the uh, Paul said that we don't we don't have to keep these feasts anymore. You know, we don't have to follow them. They were a shadow of things. But now the body is of Christ. And so now we're in Christ. And so therefore all this stuff is done away. Well, <clears throat> In my opinion, uh, based on my studies, I believe that it's because, remember, Peter said that there are many, uh, Paul wrote a lot of things, he says, in some things that are hard to understand by those who, who are unlearned and unstable, who twist uh, the scriptures just as they do Paul's writings to their own destruction. And I believe sometimes people misunderstand what Paul is saying. You got to think about it. Shaul was or Paul was a, a rabbi, a Pharisee, um, well versed in Torah and so on. And I believe that sometimes they misunderstand when he's writing to these different assemblies, and one of them was Colossians. And of course, we know that in some of these groups there were Jews, Yehudim but there were also non-Jews coming into the faith and coming to synagogue and learning and so on. Um, and that's from the book of Acts chapter 15, I believe it is where James, who is the, uh, you know, he's the Bishop of the Jerusalem assembly, basically after Yeshua is resurrected, um, James basically takes over, you know, it's, uh, the Catholic Church and then what have you believe it was Peter, but it really wasn't. If you read the book of Acts and if you read early history, um, Eusebius and a bunch of the historians, they they recognize that James was actually the overseer. And remember, he had a council where he said, you know, they were they were trying to decide how do we let Gentiles into the faith? Do we bring 613 laws and set them in front of them and say, go learn all this and then come back and see us? Um, and so what James determined was he said, you know, 
we don't want to throw such a yoke on them that even even you know was hard for us and our fathers to bear, let alone somebody who is not born in the faith and didn't wasn't raised as an Israelite and so on. So he said the main things that they should do is abstain from eating things strangled with the blood. He said abstain from fornication because you know in them days they would go into the prost there were prostitutes in the temples of the Greeks and yeah go in and you know, emulate the gods, they'd say to, to, uh, multiply and so on. So anyway, he, he basically was telling them the, the main things they have to do is stop, uh, eating things dedicated to the idols, stop fornication, stop eating things that uh, with the blood still in it. That's why he said, stop eating things strangled. Um, and he says, and, and if they do that, they'll be fine basically because Moses is taught in the synagogues every Sabbath. So again, it's showing the Sabbath was still prevalent after the death and resurrection of the Messiah. James was upholding the Sabbath. He was the overseer of the assembly. And he was saying, basically, new converts coming into the faith are not going to know every, every you know, observation, every law, every bit of Torah. So if you stop them from worshiping idols and eating the blood, then when they come to the synagogue, Moses is taught. What did he mean by Moses is taught? He meant the Torah. It's it's taught. This the first five books of Moses, and they'll learn. So this was the basic concept. And so with that, you know, if you go into Colossians chapter two, you start looking at what Paul is saying. He's writing to these people uh, in Lodicia, and he's saying, you know, lots of you have seen me in the fa- in the flesh, and you know. Uh, we had a lot of great love and so on and so forth. And then he says, but he says, uh, and, and if you want, you could pull this up, Tanya. I've got it on my. I was going to say, do you want me to pull up this? I got yeah, other... you should okay. be able to pull that up. I've got yeah. it. So he says, in this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And again, I believe he's writing to believers, but also new converts into the faith who were not Jewish necessarily. And he says, though, for though I be absent in the flesh, I'm with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ or Messiah. And he says, therefore, uh, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so you should walk with him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And now he goes in because he feels like there's some deception going on here and he wants to make sure that they don't fall from the faith. So, And where is this again that you're reading from? I'm going to just put it up. Colossians chapter 2, verse, uh, you just in the chapter 2 okay. of okay. Colossians. And so then he says, uh, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Okay, mm-hmm. Um Let's look at that for a second. He's talking about philosophies. Well, who 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 did philosophy? It wasn't the Jews. It was the Greeks. Um, you know, you had Philo and you, you, all these different, uh, you know, uh, philosophists. Yeah. And vain deceit, he says, after the traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after the Messiah or Christ. And he says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So he's focusing on Messiah. We go back to the Messiah himself, Yahshua, when he was on the earth preaching and teaching. What did he always say? He said, the words which I speak are not mine, but my father's who sent me. The words that he was speaking was Torah, right? He spoke Moses' law. He spoke the Torah, but he he gave it its fulfillment. He gave its full meaning. In, in the in the Greek, where when the Messiah first comes forth in Matthew chapter five, when he says, "Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets," I say, he says, "I haven't come to destroy them, but I have come to fulfill them." Fulfill them if right. you look it up, that word "plerosai" or there's a couple words. It's it's a Greek word. It means to fully preach, to establish, to to uphold. And so I think the term "fulfill" kind of it's not a good translation for it mm-hmm. because the Messiah, when he went to go to John the Baptist, for example, and John the Baptist says, you want me to baptize you? You should be baptizing me. And the Messiah says, no, you have to, for thus we need to fulfill all righteousness. Mm-hmm. Well, 
he wasn't saying do away with all righteousness, right? Oh, we got to do away with all righteousness. No, he was saying fulfill it, meaning bring it to its completion, establish it. So in the same sense here, when he says, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law, he's saying, yes, he is coming to show that he's the prophesied Messiah, but he's also coming to establish the Torah, the law. And so here, Paul says, you know, the Messiah is that fullness of the Godhead bodily. Um, he says, you're complete in him. Uh, he's the head of all principality and power and in whom you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. So here again, uh, there was a big contention about circumcision. Sometime we can go over, but in the first century, many Jews were teaching that the, the bloodletting of the circumcision is the atonement for sin. So Paul was saying, no, that's not what it does. It's just a reminder of the covenant that God is going to bless us and multiply us. Not, it's not atonement. So therefore he said, you know, if you are relying on circumcision, then you're denying the Messiah. But, but here he's saying, you know, we've been circumcised in the heart, buried with him in baptism and risen in the faith and the operation of God who raised him from the dead. Now listen to what he says. And he says, you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, Right. And he says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to a cross. A lot of people don't understand what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about the laws of God. He's not going to throw away the law. He was saying the ordinances, the death penalty. So in the Bible, it says, you shall honor your father and mother. That's a positive commandment. Whosoever mm -hmm. doesn't honor his mother and father should be put to death. That's the curse of the law. Any penalty okay. is the curse. So the Almighty didn't remove the, the law that says honor your mother and father. He simply removed the penalty uh, as a result of not honoring your father and mother. He says, if you, you know, yeah. if, uh, just like the woman. That's so if, good. Yeah. So when he told the woman, uh, you know, have you committed adultery? Does anybody condemn you? She said, no. And he said, okay, neither do I condemn you. Yeah. But what did he say right after that? Go and sin no more. Uh, do not transgress the Torah anymore. Sin is the transgression of the law, right? So here, Paul is saying he's blotted out those handwriting of ordinances that were enmity against us. In some Bibles, it'll say enmity. Mm -hmm. If you look at Romans chapter 7, Paul says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Why? Because it cannot keep the laws of God. But a spiritually minded person through what the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit or the spirit of holiness, leads you into what? The Messiah said when the comforter comes, it will lead you into all truth. What is the Bible said? It says your commandments are everlasting and your word is truth. The yeah. Almighty's word is truth. So the, the Holy Spirit leads you into truth. Then it gives you the ability to keep the Torah. I mean, the Torah is not hard to keep. But if you're carnally minded, then it is hard to keep. Uh, so it does seem like a burden. Um, yeah. So here Paul That's was such saying, a good point. yeah, so Paul is saying here, he's wiped out those ordinances, having spoiled principalities and powers and shown them openly. So he, he goes on. Now you got to remember, these are non-Jews, a lot of them who probably now we're going back into the Greek culture. Uh -huh. They have now become believers in Messiah. They're starting to learn about the holy days, the Sabbath, the new moons, so they're starting to observe them. So here's what Paul says. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in the respect of a holy day, a new moon or the Sabbath days, which, th which are, not were, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. So my point with this is he's telling them, you've gone back out into the ways with all your philosophers and vain philosophies and tradition of men, and now they're judging you. Why are you keeping them Jewish holidays? Why are you keeping the Sabbath? He's saying, don't let any man judge you. Don't let anyone judge you in respect to meat, drink, new moons, feast days, or holy days. These things are a shadow of things to come. When it says the body is of Christ, if you look it up in the Greek text, the, the word is is not there. King James Version, it'll be in italics. So if you really break down this whole chapter, he says, let no one therefore judge you, but the body of Christ. The only one who can judge you is the body of Christ, he's telling them. So he's saying outsiders 
cannot judge you. The Greeks and the philosophers and the men of vain traditions and the rudiments of the world, they can't, they can't judge you. He says, let no man beguile you in verse 18 of your reward in a voluntary humility, worshiping of angels, intruding into things they have not seen, vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. Remember, the carnal mind is enmity against the Almighty. Why? Because it's not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. <laughs> so he's telling them, do not worry about those things. Do not worry about the vain traditions and the, and the philosophies of these people, but hold fast in the body of Messiah. And, uh, and he goes on and talks about that. And so a lot of times, but people think that when they're saying touch not, handle not, taste not, uh, it wasn't only the Jews that did that. You know, the, the, the pagans had many traditions and ordinances and things in their ceremonies. And I believe that this is what Paul is talking about. And he's mm -hmm. saying, you know, uh, these things do have a wisdom in will, yes. worship, and humility and neglecting of the body, uh, asceticism excuse me, asceticism, but not in honoring the satisfying of the flesh. And he says, just, you know, so <clears throat> here again, he's, he's upholding the holy days. Cause why would he say in respect of a holy day? Uh, you know, if you're respecting a holy day or you're honoring a holy day, he says, don't let anyone judge you for that or for yeah. the Sabbath days and new moons. And so again, um, and then if you look into the new Testament where Paul is traveling, there's one day where he goes and he's, in a synagogue on the Sabbath day, it says, as mm -hmm. was his custom, it says, and he's teaching and he's getting ready to leave. And the people wanted him to stay. If you remember that, and they said, please stay. And he said, no, by all means, I must be keeping the feast, which is in Jerusalem. Now, if, if the feast were done away, or if you were a Christian, you didn't have to keep it anymore. Why yeah, would why Paul would he be, doing that? Mm -hmm. be arguing? And yes. And if he could believe me, if he could stay and teach more, he probably would have. But he yeah. even rejected it and said, look, I've got to go. I've got to keep the feast. It's a, it's a commandment of the Holy yeah. One. So, and it does, I always look at it as, um, you know, we reap what we sow on earth. So when God comes in, when Jesus came in and, and um, became sin, became the, the curse, it is so that we don't have that, but right. it's also interesting because I think the reason he says to still uphold it is because of the damage it will do to our flesh while we're still stuck here on this side of heaven, you know, because we're not there yet. And so when we, you know, we think about if we eat like, oh, I, I have people that'll say I can eat whatever I want because the word says no, nothing shall harm me. Right. You know, I can right. eat poison. It will not harm me. That's in my view, that's almost taking that to an abusive level, like as if Jesus is some genie in a bottle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, remember, it says that you shall not tempt the almighty your yeah. God. You know, you also you're not to tempt him. So um, Those laws are still there and they're for a reason. They're, right. They are for it's, our benefit. You know what I mean? Right. It's like when the, the devil was uh, with Yeshua and, and he says, cast yourself off or the almighty, you know, the angels shall cast, cast you up and bear you in their wings. And, and the Messiah said, you should not tempt Yahweh, your mighty one. Yeah. Um, so in the same way, it's the same thing. Um, same thing. You know, so if good. in the event you are doing righteousness and someone gives you food that have, would have some contamination or poison in it and you happen to eat it, then I believe Hashem is yeah. saying, the almighty is saying, you know, I will protect you from these things yes. because you're going to go out into this world and they're going to hate you and they're going to want to try to stop you. So I think that's more or less what he's talking about. Um, I totally agree. And it's fascinating and, because we forget a lot of the church either abuses it, you know, and misinterprets it or doesn't understand it. Um, but, you know, all of this, like you're pointing out, it's such great truths that, you know, we still have to abide by the, those things are not gone. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I think that people misunderstand that because you, you, if you look at first John five, three, uh, you know, when John is talking about the love of God is keeping the commandments, he says, and, and, uh, he says, uh, for this is uh, how we show the love of God when we keep his commandments. And he says, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not yeah. a burden. Right. Whereas, the Messiah said the same thing. He said, you know, come and learn of me and take on my yoke for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yeah. The, the laws of the Holy One 
uh, they're not meant to be burdensome. It, but but right. what happened as the Israelites were in, in the wilderness and so on, uh, the analogy is that they were more carnally minded. They were more, yeah. they were not focused on the Holy One. So the Almighty said, what did he say? He said, I'm going to take these laws and now I'm going to write them into your hearts and into your minds. Yeah. So he wasn't writing a different set of laws. He was simply right. saying, I'm going to take these same laws. The only laws that were really done away with, in a sense, were transferred was the Levitical priesthood laws. Mm -hmm. So those laws in the temple were transferred into the heavens. The Messiah became the high priest. Mm -hmm. And now he's setting right. up a priesthood. So we no longer have to sacrifice animals and the Levitical laws. But he, mm -hmm. he yeah, so, th so those laws were temporary. 430 right. years till the Messiah should come to whom the seed was uh, was promised and so on. And so the, the priesthood went from the firstborn to the Levitical priesthood and then mm -hmm. back to the firstborn. Uh, yeah. you got to remember before the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness with the calf, the golden calf, and they were sinning, right. Moses broke the commandments. And what did he say? Whoever is zealous for the almighty come to me. Who came to him? The Levites. Uh-huh. Isn't that interesting? People. Yeah. And so then what did he say? Because you did that, you are now the priesthood. Right. But they were a temporary priesthood. They only yeah. rolled over the sin, he says. And so then he had to do away with that priesthood and bring it back to the firstborn, mm -hmm. uh, which would be the Messiah. So it's all in the Torah, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's like ragu. It's in there. You know, it's uh, uh -huh. it's all in there. <laughs> it's so fascinating. It's it's just um, you have such deep. Uh, you have such an easy way to explain it. I guess that's the other thing is you've just got a, a gift for explaining these things in a very easy to understand way. Our time is almost up, but we're going to have you back. We're going to make this regular, um, mm. uh, a regular occurrence, but tell everybody Great. where they can find you as well. Okay. So on my Facebook, I have a channel called, um, something I can't remember now. Uh, <laughs> It went right out of my head. So, so you can funny. come to Rumble. On okay. Rumble, I have a six Semper Tyrannus news, just as you have on the screen. If you just write it, and when you go to Rumble, you just write that in six Semper right. Tyrannus news, all one word. Um, and um, I do have a Facebook, Mark Matheny. You could look that up. And I have uh, something else I can't remember now. My yeah, brain is so fried. Something truth, uh, the uh, the unhidden truth, or okay. Uh, the hard truth. I can't remember, but it's, is you'll, it you'll connected find it. To your, is it connected to your Mark Matheny page? Uh, no, but I'm going to, I'm going to start setting some stuff up on my, on my rumble channel to my okay. other connections. So that way people can find them. <laughs> Perfect. It's hard to find me. I, I don't know. I, I don't focus too hard on trying to be found, but if, if you find me great, you know? Um, yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Well, thank you. It's always such a pleasure to have you on. I'm so glad that we got to meet through uh, Dave and Penny over at the yeah. Awake Nation. We love them over there. And you're on their show every, are you there every Friday? Like every other week, but then um, they also now have extended me to a full hour. Right. Which is so, good because you've got so much I'll information. Be, Can't go through it in 30 minutes. All in there. Yeah. So I wonder, will you still be right before my time slot on Fridays? Or I wonder Probably. If you'll be I'm, I'm guessing. I okay. think it, we'll see, but uh, yeah. So that's <laughs> so something hopefully. for all of you that are watching or listening. You can find us on every other Friday. So um, every other Friday on the Awake Nation on Rumble or on their website, you can find it that way. And usually I have the link below. So, well, thank you so much, Mark. So grateful to have you on here today. Thank you. And yeah, uh, absolutely. Remember, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And as we finish today, you all know we actually finish with a scripture and that's the scripture for today. Hebrews 4, 9 through 11. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. We're so grateful to you, the viewer. Thank you for partnering with us. Um, thank you for supporting the show. You know, this is all self-funded. So if you love this content, you can go over to tanyajoy.tv, go to the donate tab, and you can set up a one-time donation. You can set up a monthly 
anything helps. $5, $25, $2,500, whatever helps. We're at the beginning of the year, so uh, there's a lot of costs that go into doing this. And I think I had just about $1,000 that was going out um, in January just to keep everything going, just to be able to uh, produce the show and all the technologies and things that we have to have in order to make this happen. So if you love this, it would be really wonderful for you to help us by sending a one-time gift. Um, it is all tax deductible because we have a nonprofit set up. So anything you donate is tax deductible. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Again, you can find out more about me and the show at tanyajoy.tv. Please come over and check out Blessed News Network, blessednewstv.com. And you can find the Tanya Joy channel over there and follow us as well. Thanks again. God bless you. And until next time, bye for now. Hi, everybody. This is Tanya Joy from The Tanya Joy Show, also known as Beauty for Ashes. And I want to take a quick minute and talk to you about my new favorite sprays. This is by Verve Vitamins. Now, I want to show you this one in particular. I've got three here that I use on a very regular basis. One is Sunny, it's called. Let's see if we can see it. And I'm going to show you a quick commercial. This is vitamin D3, and it is amazing if you need to be in the sun and get those extra vitamins. This one is Energy. These are vitamin sprays. You do seven sprays in your mouth, and it takes care of your vitamins. You can travel with them. I mean, these are small. They're the size of a pen. You can stick them in your purse. But this one right now is what you need to get. This is called Cold. It's vitamin C and zinc. I came down with a little bit of something right around the new year, and I started spraying this. I actually used it three times a day, and you guys, it's less than five days later, and it is gone. So you need to check out Verve Vitamins. Stick around, I'm gonna show you the video, and in that video, it's gonna show you the website to go to. You will get a discount with our code, Tanya Joy. so be sure you check this out. This is gonna change your life, I'm telling you. These are amazing. hope you've enjoyed this episode of Beauty for Ashes with Tanya Joy. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave us a comment below. Lastly, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, share with those who came to mind. Be blessed and remember you were created for such a time as this.